Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 57. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We normally release this video on the first of the month, but because we did our April 1st video on April 1st, this got delayed. Also, you should note that I'm actually recording this video on March 28th, and I just won't have time to record it next week. I will be out of town. So if you're looking at the video and you're like, oh, the price looks a lot different than what I'm looking at it here on April 2nd, is because this video is being recorded five days before you're actually looking at it. So as of March 28th, 2025, the total market cap of crypto is coming in at around 2.725 trillion with a fair value at around 3.629 trillion. This represents an undervaluation of approximately 25%. The way it works is anytime it's below the red line, below the quote unquote fair value, Bitcoin dominance generally goes higher. Anytime it goes above that level, that's when you can normally expect Bitcoin dominance to start dropping. But until that time, this just represents a continual rotation of capital from altcoins to Bitcoin. One way to sort of recognize what's actually happening if you look at the percent difference between the total market cap and the fair value we're actually basically back down to where we were in august and september of 2024 despite the fact that the market cap is higher than where it was back then but the main reason that we're you know we're back down there is because you have to remember that the fair value is a monotonically increasing function furthermore bitcoin is well above where it was in august and september at least as of march 28th uh, whereas a lot of other assets are not right if you were to look at ethereum it's actually below where it was in August and September. And if you were to look at, say, like the altcoin market, um, it's not as low as August and September. But you can see that when you take the asset class as a whole, it has dropped considerably. And that's because some of those higher market cap alts haven't really been doing that well. And Bitcoin is mostly the reason why the asset class is up in the first place. And so this is something that has happened before where we go above the fair value and then come back down. It's happened a couple of times this cycle. If you take if you take the percent difference between the total market cap and fair value, you'll get a chart that looks like this. And you can actually see that this is, a, this is actually right where it got rejected at in the, the pre-pandemic high before a pretty sharp drop and then a recovery after that. You can also see this level right here is where it got rejected at in August of 2012 before a drop back down and then ultimately a, recover, a recovery later on. So we've actually seen this happen many times before, where it'll go above the fair value, but then the macro doesn't really support a sustained rally, and the macro doesn't continue to support a rally by the altcoin market, which is really what you need to see in order for the asset class as a whole to truly get durably above the fair value. As long as it's just Bitcoin participating in the rally, and primarily Bitcoin, then it's still likely to stay either below or right around that fair value logarithmic regression trend line. This is something we've talked about for a long time, how you know there's certain phases of the cycle where Bitcoin dominance goes up, there's other phases where Bitcoin dominance goes down, and we've just been in a phase where Bitcoin dominance goes up. Usually, you know, once we get this far out in the cycle, as that weakness in the market continues to come in, again, right now, Bitcoin's right around 83, 84K. I don't know what it's going to be on April 2nd. If there does continue to be weakness into early April, early to mid-April, perhaps it would correspond with Ethereum, you know, really going home, all Bitcoin pairs continuing to drop. These are all normal processes that normally play out. They've just taken a lot, a lot longer to play out this cycle than they normally do, making a lot of people think that this time truly is different. In a lot of ways, it can be different when you look at certain metrics, but in other ways, the processes that have always played out are playing out. They're just playing out on a longer time scale. So please remember that you know it's easy to, to want things to happen in a very specific way, but the process of the cycle does tend to eventually play out, whether we want to rush through it or not, is irrelevant to the market. The market's going to do what the market's going to do, regardless of whether you or I are patient enough to wait for it. So with that in mind, again, we are still currently below the fair value. Uh, if it continues to drop, like say if it's 30 or 40% below it, or even 50 to 60% below it, you'll likely see a lot more inter intervention by the Federal Reserve. They already cut, uh, or they already slowed quantitative tightening a little bit in response to the 10% drop by the S&P 500. If the S&P were to continue to drop, you would probably see the Federal Reserve become even more accommodative. The only question is, is you know, do they wait too long to, to make that transition, or do they do it in, in time? And 
obviously that's you know sort of the million dollar question that everyone wants to be answered but in terms of in terms of this chart we've been tracking it for a long time it continues to to provide a lot of value the only thing that I, I I sometimes go back to is that the drop here that occurred in August 2015 before it really started going actually did go basically all the way down to that lower band if you look at intraday wicks and then even in March 2020 the drop that occurred if you look at intraday wicks we know that the asset class actually went down to about a hundred billion I don't know if it's gonna go that low but you know you you could imagine the lower value down here of this trend line is still quite a bit further down than where we currently are. If it goes down there, it might just simply be a wick that gets, you know, eaten up pretty quickly. Again, I don't know if it's going to happen. Um, it's it's kind of hard to call for, you know, call for timings of, of all that kind of stuff. But there has obviously been a lot of uncertainty introduced into the market recently with, with you know, um, tariffs and whatnot and I, I suppose if I release this video April 2nd that might actually correspond to the tariff announcement so let's see what happens there but um, this this does continue to sort of be like a guiding way to look at at how the cryptoverse operates right when it's when it's down here below the fair value Bitcoin tends to outperform alts when you get above the fair value then you start to see altcoins start to more durably outperform outperform Bitcoin it's just that so far the macro has not really justified a sustained rally above the fair value because altcoins keep on bleeding back to Bitcoin because monetary policy remains restrictive monetary policy remains restrictive because all Bitcoin pairs remain off the range lows obviously the Fed's not looking at all Bitcoin pairs but the argument is that all Bitcoin pairs give us insight into the strength of the consumer so that's the way I'm thinking about it I mean, my goal, I, I do think that the asset class will eventually go to 10 trillion, plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among friends?